Namaste. Welcome. Today's lesson is the Kapilabhati breath or the breaths of fire. It's energizing, it's cleansing, it's good for the health of our respiratory system, and it's good for the strength and the health of our abdomen region, core region. There are contraindications, so please um, talk to your teacher and find out if this technique is for you. In its totality, the practice of breaths of fire is a combination of two breathing patterns. The first breathing pattern is this preparatory inhale we do and a kumbhaka at the top of that inhalation. The reason being is the preparatory breath yeah, shall open the pathway of the energy. It alerts the spine and it holds the inner structure stable. And at the same time, it supplies the lungs and the vital organs with that buffer of energy yeah, because later on, as we do the breath of fire, we are not actually breathing our full potential. All right. So the kumbhaka there yeah, will yeah, support your vital organs with the, the energy. At the same time, yeah, encourages the nadis to absorb yeah, the extra amount of energy, the prana, from that kumbhaka. So this is when now the breath of fire become yeah, more of an internal cleansing method of the nadis. All right. So the second breath pattern is the shallow breath itself. All right. So we focus on the exhalation only. And the quality of the exhalation is confident, dynamic, and sharp. And it has to be done in rhythmical intervals, uniform intervals. All right. You don't want to apply too much pressure, neither too weak. It has to be done in a way that is confident and alert and sharp, like pointed. And it has to be performed in rhythmical intervals. All right. As you do your exhalation, you will feel an involuntary suction you know, of air come in your nostrils. All right. So that is enough to support the upper regions of the respiratory system. It's like an organic way of inhaling, but you are not inhaling technically. You do not allow that air that naturally comes in to descend all the way down to your lungs. Yeah, similar to a normal inhalation. Why? Because you are doing it you know, shallowly that if you allow that air to fully enter and then suddenly you expel the breath out and you then allow the lungs to fully recover, you might suffer pain. In the same manner, if you do it not in rhythmical interval, for example, if you wait too long, that air suddenly goes down and inevitably you will gasp. Yeah, and then if you force a technique and the lungs then have the time to recover, the pressure builds up and it's not good for the health of your internal organs. Right? So that's the significance of those intervals. Yeah, so you do not allow that air to fully descend, yeah, so it just goes right here. Up regions and then around the frontal region of the head. Thus, before it descends down to the lungs, expel it right away. Yeah, you're saying your next rapid breath. All right. Now, the release. Since you're holding a kumbhaka there, yeah, at one point, the chest and the breath will become heavy. So that's an indication that your buffer has run out. The nadis have fully absorbed you know, the prana, which is from that retention. Thus, it's an indication for you to release a technique. And then to release a technique, you will be doing a light. Clip up breath again, not as deep as the preparatory, but just a light one, just to create that energetic lift and support, and then slowly exhale the old air out. All right. So I will be showing you one or two rounds of the breath so far. Okay. So the spine would have to remain open and tall. Preparatory breath in. Retain. When the chest and the breath become heavy, a light clip up breath, and then slowly release the old air out. All right, let's do another one. Breathing in, retain, and 
Clip up breath, light, exhale, slowly down. All right, so don't worry about the sound. Don't force it to happen. Don't worry about the pumping of the belly. Don't force it to happen. When you do the technique properly the first time, they will just manifest organically. What's important is the safety, the energetic support, the stability coming from that initial breath. All right, the distinct yeah, uh, technique of the uh, expelling of the breath out of the nostril and not allowing that organic air to fully descend. Somehow you need to flush it right away using that dynamic and uh, rhythmical intervals of the technique. And then after the practice, after one round, recover the breath a few times. Yeah, and then do your next round. All right, so breath of fire is really beneficial, lots of benefit if only we do it properly and carefully. Till the next one. Namaste.